Do you remember a three-year-old asking you to tell you a story? I know that I do, and it turns out that we love stories even when we get older. My guest today is Doug Stevenson, and he is the author of Story Theater Method, Strategic Storytelling in Business. Welcome to the show, Doug. Thank you, Michelle. It's true that we all love stories even as we get older. We want to hear stories. Everybody wants to hear a story because that's the first way that we learned, and there's an inherent, um, almost organic, intuitive ability to learn through stories because they're auditory, they're visual, they're kinesthetic, they activate our imagination. So they work at so many levels, uh, and they also, as far as I'm concerned, they just tap into a pleasure center in the brain because when you hear a story, it just makes you feel good. So if we can actually show people how to use stories to teach something, to make a point, to sell a product, all the better. Absolutely. Now, you say that everybody should be telling stories in business. So when you're making a presentation, you don't just get up there and talk, that you actually tell it in the form of a story, right? Yes, the, um, the story theater method that I've created is a combination of acting, storytelling, narrative, classical storytelling, narrative, and branding. And this hybrid that I've created allows people to strategically ask themselves before a presentation, what is the most important lesson or lessons that I need to leave this room full of people with? Whether that's in a boardroom or a sales meeting or in front of 150 people or in front of 5,000 people, to strategically ask yourself before a presentation, what do they have to remember? And then to take that lesson or that point and then go in search of what's the story that teaches that point, and then to craft that story using my story theater method, the nine steps of story structure, and deliberately and strategically using the story to make that point, knowing if I use a story rather than just saying what it is, it's more likely to be remembered. And if people don't remember what you say, they can't activate. They can't take action on it. So they can't do what you want them to do or what you're suggesting them to do. So I believe that everybody in a business presentation should be using a story, whether that's a short story like a vignette or a more well-crafted story that's more like four to ten minutes long. So not just professional speakers or people that are out there speaking. You just mentioned that for everybody in business should be doing this as a story. Does that include like an accountant getting up making a presentation to their board? Uh, that includes an accountant making a presentation to their board or to their customer, uh, a sales manager trying to motivate their sales force, a leader trying to motivate uh, the people that they're, uh, they're working with to uh, embrace a change or a, a difference in direction, an entrepreneur who's trying to go to a Rotary Club meeting or a Leeds Club meeting and communicate what it is that they do. I've been at so many of these presentations where I hear people stand up and they say, well, this is what I do, da 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 and it sounds like a grocery list. Yeah, right. And as I listen, I think, well, duh, of course, that's what you do. You say you're in landscaping, and you just told me that you do landscaping. Well, big surprise, hello. Why won't you tell me a story about a, a, a customer that you had who wanted a landscaping job to be done in a certain way and tell me the three-minute story that takes me through the process and the end result so that I get to have a visual experience rather than just listening to it. So I think we can all use stories, but... You have to be deliberate and you have to think story rather than thinking, well, I'm just going to deliver the content. I'm going to tell them what it is. All right. So you help people through this book and through your workshops, because I know you do workshops all over the world, actually craft the story. Now, you mentioned acting earlier. You mentioned branding and, and some other things as well. But acting, doesn't that terrify some people who are going, whoa, I'm just an accountant or I'm just a, you know, a person in the corporate world and I don't want to be an actor? Actually, it's interesting. Uh, so many people that I watch when they're in an airport, in a restaurant, in a store, in a parking lot, I observe behavior all the time. That's what actors do. And I'll notice that people are so animated. And they're telling stories, and they're taking on the voices of the character, and they're being animated, and they're using their hands and doing body language. And, and I watch people, and I think, 
if they only saw themselves off stage being this animated, when I ask them to be that animated in the specific context of a moment in the story, which is the acting aspect, they wouldn't freak out so much, but they'd realize, well, I do this all the time. I act out my boss giving me a hard time. I act out my daughter with her attitude. We act these things out when we're talking to other people. I mean, you know what I mean, don't you, Michelle? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, we do. We all have part of that inside. It just sounds a little intimidating when you're saying, you know, I'm going to bring out the actor in you and you're telling a, giving a corporate presentation. Now, you've got nine steps towards crafting the story, and you lay it all out in the in the story theater method, your book that explains this. Give us just an overview of a, a couple of the first steps. Well, the nine steps of story structure are basically taking the classical story structure that you would see in any movie like Titanic or Star Wars or the Raiders of the Lost Ark or the Matrix, anything that you see, Avatar, they all follow the same storyline, which is you set the scene at the beginning of the story, you create the context, the time, the place, the circumstances, the atmosphere, you introduce who some of the characters are, the characters or the main character goes off on a journey, they want to go off on this journey to accomplish something, whether it's a love story or an adventure, they're going off on a journey from point A to point B to accomplish some goal or some task, along the way they encounter an obstacle, Something happens, something, a misunderstanding or a bad guy or some, you know, car accident or something happens. And then they overcome the obstacle. And through the process of overcoming the obstacle or obstacles, they learn a lesson. And so at the end of the story, you resolve the story. Now, in a movie, that's all you need to do is resolve the story and, you know, show us how did things work out in the end. In business presentations, we need to use the story so that after we resolve the story, we make a point or we teach a lesson. And so the basic nine steps of story structure take you through that classical story structure that Sophocles and Shakespeare and Ibsen and Chekhov and Tennessee Williams have used, as well as Steven Spielberg and George Lucas and, and everybody else who's ever made a movie. It's classical story structure. When you understand and utilize that structure, you can be an amazing storyteller. All right. The book is Story Theater Method. My guest today is Doug Stevenson. You can uh, find out everything about him and more on his website, storytellingandbusiness.com, and there will be a link uh, here for people to click on over. The book's available Amazon and everywhere. Fabulous books are sold. Doug, leave us with one point for people out there who want to get started um, while they're waiting for their book to arrive? What's one thing that they can start on today to help them become better speakers, better storytellers? Think about the dilemma that you're facing or the challenge that you're facing. And if you're going to try and teach someone how to deal with that lesson based on your life experience, what story from your past, what event from your past where you experienced a similar challenge would be a metaphorical story to teach that lesson. So when you're talking to your kids and you're saying, well, when I was a kid, I was in a situation once, you're basically using a story as a metaphor from the past for the present. So remember that stories are metaphors, and they teach a lesson in the present from the past. So just pay attention to how many times you're thinking about when did I learn this lesson in the past, and how can I use that story now to teach a lesson and you'll be fine. You'll be much more effective. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show today, Doug. It was a great pleasure to have you here. My pleasure, Michelle. Thanks a lot.